What about online communication? One of the statements in the book where it says in that in our chapter uh, states that it actually gives us a plus uh, that we are more easily ready to see things we like in other persons if we, if the first contact is is online. Now this adds a dangerous notion towards that <laughs> might not be a good thing, right? So there's a kind of a progressive empowerment element of this decontextualization uh, of our text because you don't see that I'm poor and colored and migrant, whatever, and female. You just see, this is the statement, deal with it. Which is kind of a, has a potential of e being an equalizer in discourse and removing elements of power disbalances in our discourse. But I want to uh, get back to this pragmatics. There's a difference between what we say and what we mean and very often it's the context we need in order to decipher what somebody means. Like, it's grafty in here, might have the actual meaning, please close the window, right? In order to understand that, you need to be in that room with the person and see that there's an open window, right? If you don't see that, you lack the key to understanding what this is, say, yeah, so, yeah, you, this is true. It is drafty. Thank you very much for your interesting contribution and not do anything, which would be hugely annoying to the other person, right? This is an important element of communication. It's called pragmatics. It's a field of study for linguist, linguists, and there's an entire science of how that works on different levels of communication. But the key moment being contextual information being significant for deciphering what people mean by what they say. Facial expression being one of the key things, key factors here. Is he being sarcastic or is he being like, is that what he really thinks? The reason for written language developing the way it is now, adding a whole entire set of signs to what basically will be standard language, you know, is all, maybe is already standard written language, right? Is that we're trying to compensate for the lack of visual context in our communication. It is direct, it's person to person in a chat, for example, as even synchronous, more or less. But there is this lack of, are you serious about this? No, I'm just kidding. And instead of having to type both question and answer and dealing with the consequences of misunderstanding, you just put a winky smiley in and everything is clear. Fine. Now what you're saying is though, and I, found that profound is, well, but that just adds another layer of superficiality in our communication. And the real question then is, what is behind the, what is the face behind the winky smile, right? And that is a, that's a scary question. That's something I should make an, an entire project about, because I don't think uh, we have scientific uh, studies of that. You know, the question of authenticity and depth of communication. Because we're trying to make it more personally significant by adding on emojis. And all we're doing is like, then we have like those guys, I don't hope none of you is that guy, that always adds like a ton of emojis and throws it at its text like laughing, rolling on the floor with laughter. If you had that in real life communication, you'd call a doctor. <laughs> There seems to be quite an awareness in your generation of uh, the level of skill you need to acquire to communicate efficiently in social media. Basic characteristics of online communication as opposed to offline communication. Very, very simple. A, they're always interactive. Right? Offline, reading a paper, you can't you know, click the ad in order to buy the thing is a very, very uh, intriguing to me point. And that is the absence of the physicality of interpersonal communication that you have in face-to-face -face communication. But even the difference between actually reading a book thing <coughs> is different from the experience of reading something online. For example, our um, book, the wonderful flame-throwing squirrel, digital media and society, our textbook. 
actually having the book and going through the chapter is a different, different experience to reading the thing online. And I want you to think about what that different act difference actually means to you personally. And being kind of old, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you will take a book into your hands from time to time because I firmly believe that the physicality of the haptic experience adds something to your reading experience, to the, how meaningful it is to you. Because we are physical beings and our soul lives in our body and our intelligence lives in our body and our body can be smart and dumb, <coughs> it can be happy and unhappy with us. It's almost redundant to say with us because it's, it is us. Right? We are our bodies. So um, to take that away from communication, ooh, that's a big, that's a, that's a biggie. Communication also is synchronous when it's face to face. It's asynchronous when it's uh, print, for example. So we have some previous experience with asynchronous um, communication, but not in the terms of um, what happens, for example, with email, where it can be from second to second, anything between from second to second up to the scale of never answer that mail, right? So. Um, there is something different there between writing a letter and waiting for the answer, which seems so far away now, historically. Have you ever written a physical letter? Who has, who's written a physical letter? Oh, so you all have, okay. But there is something, there is something about letters that is really different from, from email. Going to your letterbox and, and have, getting a personal, not, you know, a bill. <laughs> or taxes or something like that. But uh, a personal letter, that is something that touches you inside somehow. Something to think about. Now, and uh, the potential of anonymity, that is another very big thing. Uh, this is changing because for specific reasons of the development of the medium, the level of anonymity is going down. But still, it's, it's a huge uh, issue. And then it's processual, which means it's a continuous process of not like, well, I wrote a book, it was published, and there you have it, end of story. It is now something that is a continuous, <coughs> ongoing process of interaction. Even if you write a book, if it's online, like if you publish an article online, you have the comment section in almost anything you publish, right? What does that mean? Like, if you take offline communication and in order to compare it with online communication, you have the natural connection between the body and the communicator, right? You have this personal touch and feel of the sound of that person's voice, the way the handwriting looks like. Yeah, so we mentioned in class today that there's quite a difference between online and offline communication and that oh, one of the bigger differences would be those physical or impersonal, emotional cues that people uh, let off when they're talking face to face. So for example, their body language or their tone of voice, their expressions and, and so on and so forth. And I've noticed that to make up for the lack of these cues, the online community kind of introduce their own touch to it, like they introduced emojis, introduced profile pictures, different ways of speech, uh, acronyms for different phrases, and um, all these sim similar things just to try to create, uh, a, like virtually, that touch of personal um, uh, contact that people have when they talk face, face to face. But I've noticed that that is not enough and that can never replicate the actual physical contact between people. That simply creates another online identity for people. So, for example, I've met an online friend very recently that I had contact with for a very long period of time. And even though both online and offline we would talk about almost the same topics, it still felt like the dynamic was very different. And 
um, like even though she would say the same thing on text as she would in person it just felt like she was a different person like I was just getting to know her because the dynamic was just presented to me and the dynamic that we would have online as familiar as it would be still in person there were there were quite crucial differences that I would have never um, picked out in an online conversation rather than just in person so I think that's quite a topic for social media today to be talked about and like uh, gotten into um, I just wanted to mention um, a topic that we had like in the very late or like in the uh, end of the class and it was just that um, I think sometimes because we were talking about responding directly to a message or not responding to a message and um, I think it's very interesting just to hear that some people because we had like kind of a discussion in the end if you should respond directly to a message for example on WhatsApp or other social media channels and different um, components play into wall for example personal space um, as well as just having their privacy but as well um, some people depending if they like the other person or not it kind of it kind of goes back to our origin that's what I'm thinking so um, it's just kind of our natural instinct to um, kind of take the time and not maybe be directly attracted to someone so like maybe that's kind of a way how to not um, directly react on someone but rather um, take the time and make it even more interesting <laughs>